I'm gonna mess with some folks. I don't know what kind of friendships, relationships, business ships, partnerships, family ships you're in. But why would we allow someone to say, do, or abuse us in particular ways when God won't do it? It's some stuff. God would never, God loves us. He, he said, okay, I love you so much, but if you want to choose to go to hell, you can go, but I really don't want you to go. But God would never abuse us. He wouldn't even control our will. But if you got somebody that's going to try and manipulate you and control your will, it's not on the paper, I'm just saying. That might be something you want to sidestep. It's okay, I'm not scared. So Ephesians 5 25 through 33 and in and, and the B portion talks about how Christ loved the church and gave himself up up for her so that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the uh, water with the word that he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot wrinkle or any such thing like that so you mean to tell me that Jesus got on the cross for me to make sure that I would be taken care of that I wouldn't be sidetracked along the road some of us sitting on the side of the road, we sidetracked with some stuff that we were supposed to have given up a long time ago. Point number two, get out of the grave clothes. The funeral is over. And if we stay in our funeral clothes at the graveside, we won't get the rest of the assignment done. If we stay at the funeral, we give death, and all of those emotions and demonic spirits of death, halting, stopping, fear, depression, and others permission to stay with and stifle our movement in life and the things of God. Look at somebody and say, get out of the grave clothes. Situations have tried to keep us depressed by sitting by the graveside with hopeless and depressing thoughts. We sit right by the graveside. John eleven forty three and forty five in the Amplified version says, um, "When he had said this, he shouted with a loud voice, talking about Jesus, Lazarus, come out!" And out walked the man who had been dead, with his hands and feet wrapped in burial cloths, linen strips, and with a burial napkin bound around his face. Jesus said to them, "Free him." of the burial wrappings and let them go. Now we're not literally in burial linens, linens, but we are still in our funeral clothes. We're still in a funeral procession. Still in that procession. And we only step out occasionally and are fully present in the present plans of God. And then we step back into the funeral procession where some people think we should be. You know, some people think you should still be in the but don't you know that's an insult to God? That means that that situation is more powerful than our God. So whatever thing that we have gone through, mm -hmm, so it's not just pastor, it's the new whole family, it's friends. No one should try to measure your depth of sadness or loss or experience because nobody will ever know. We all know that our bishop transitioned. I think I, I probably caught, cried for about two, three weeks straight. I think I probably was looking at the back of the wall the whole time. I think all of us were wrecked. And sometimes we still wrecked. But it's not just about him transitioning. It's about people still being in grave clothes related to other things like rape, drug abuse, incarceration. Some people was locked up and they never got over it. Abandonment, rejection. This is graveside stuff. Some folks still in the, in the grave clothes from this. Domestic violence. You know you got beat about every other day. Yeah. Betrayal, low self-worth, and other traumatic experiences. And also breakups and other things from our lives. People still at the graveside. Funeral over. 